Hey folks, uh, Tony Winston here for Jazz Piano College and welcome. I'm going to cover a couple of songs today and work mostly on improvisational ideas, stuff for the right hand. I'm going to talk a little bit about this uh, music theory, is it racist stuff. So if you don't want to hear this, just skip ahead by three or four minutes and uh, we'll get right into the songs. And the tunes I'm going to cover are uh, Solar by Miles Davis. I might do a little bit on this one down here too, Tune Up, which is on the same page. And also... Uh, Nardis, Nardis, another great Miles Davis song. And uh, let me just address this uh, racism in music thing for a second. I watched Adam Neely's video, of course, and, you know, uh, he always does such a great job. And I'm certainly not uh, equipped with my high school education to uh, debate any college professors on this subject. But, but here's my problem with it. There are so many other bigger issues, you know, like... Um, police brutality, especially against minorities, gerrymandering, unfair uh, loan practices, um, you know, discrimination in hiring practices. And uh, even when it comes to hiring uh, musicians, um, you know, that's, that's where the real racism comes in. The way I look at music theory is, and especially when you're talking about like harmony, it's kind of a science. I mean, you know, most of, you know, what they call uh, Western, I don't know, what are they calling it? The, you know, the German composers, uh, that music theory. It's all based around this 5-1 thing. And then there was this racist guy, Schenke, Schenker, whatever his name is, who, you know, kind of like um, simplified, you know, a lot of music and kind of just showed you how it all basically ends up being a, a, a 5 to a 1. But... This, this is like a scientific idea. Now you can have a racist scientist. I mean, maybe Newton was a, was a racist. Maybe, one of the, maybe Kepler was a, was a racist. Maybe Copernicus was a racist. I don't know. I really don't. But certainly in the history of science, there have been some racists. But if their theories are proven and, uh, you know, it's accepted science... You know, we don't really care that they were racist. You know, it it's either works or it doesn't. And it's, it's the same thing with music theory. It either works or it doesn't. And uh, I can appreciate there's, there's a lot of influences from a lot of different cultures that can be taught. But you will notice <laughs> that if you listen to, you know, um, Indian music, especially the music that they use for their movies, and uh, Japanese and Chinese music, and uh, music, for, Persian music, all around the world, uh, you know, it's all adopted this Western musical theory, all right? They, they use the same kind of chord progressions as, as pop songs, as classical songs, and, you know, this thing of, you know, the, the two, the five chord going to the one chord, it's universal. I mean, it's something that just about everybody can relate to. And I've had, you know, I teach a lot of kids from a lot of different countries and, uh, you know, their parents come in and there are occasionally a parent like somebody from that grew up in Pakistan or something that just doesn't hear. They can't hear when the piano's out of tune and they can't really hear. I don't know if they can or not really, but, you know, something like that doesn't make as much sense to them as it might to somebody like me who grew up listening to church hymns and classical music and all that good stuff. <laughs> so it's not that, you know, Bach and Beethoven are so much better than anybody else, you know. It's just that that's where the science really evolved. And, you know, the science of, of rhythm and of harmony, uh, it is a science. There's just no need to, to you know, throw it out. <laughs> So rather than waste a whole lot of time, you know, trying to decide, you know, <clears throat> how to teach theory in college, students are going to learn what they want to learn. If, if they're not really interested in, in classical uh, theory, you know, it's not going to really stick with them. It's, it's really more important to talk about things like, well, you know, I used to be in a, uh, have a pretty nice little trio and I played at this Piedmont Driving Club for years, for Valentine's Day, for little tea parties and things like that. I mostly worked with a couple of my friends. They were white. Um, but then I started, you know, playing with uh, a drummer. I put up his album recently, Alan Murphy, because I thought he was just such a great singer and a good drummer and, uh, and a good friend. And I, I hired him. And that was the last time I was ever hired at Piedmont Driving Club under my own name. I've been there with band leaders. But uh, 
you know, I played a little tea party and Alan was playing the drums there. And, uh, you know, Valentine's Day came along and the next thing came along and I didn't get called. And I don't know if that was the reason, but uh, I think it was. If you know anything about the Piedmont Driving Club, you, you probably think I'm right. And even just a few years ago, four or five years ago, I was hired by the Ritz, uh, Ritz Carlton down in Buckhead. And the agent told me, you know, pretty much point blank that uh, the reason we were getting hired is, is because, you know, the, the band that they had in there for years and years was attracting too much of a black clientele. So they, you know, they hired us because at that time, you know, I was, you know, it was with three white guys and we were playing, you know, just kind of classic rock and country and a little bit of socially upscale jazz or whatever you know frank sinatra songs and shit like that they pretty much killed their business by doing by trying to do stuff like that and uh all right solar i've done a video on this before but uh, it's been quite a while and you know i'm just going to go over the song real quickly with the chords and then i'm going to show you just a couple of melodic ideas semi-melodic ideas you know kind of a different way of, of looking at an improvisation that you know, might help you get going on it. So it starts on a C minor, but right away we've got that major seventh, so we want to make it a C minor major seventh or a C minor six. And there's a good rootless voicing that goes like that. And then we're going to come up here and do a two, five, one, going to F. And then we're going to do a two, five, one, going to E flat. Very similar, right? And then we're going to do a 2-5-1 going to D-flat, and this one comes a little quicker. Now, if you know rootless voicings, and the D-flat, and then, you see, it's a pretty close chord there to go to D minor 7 flat 5, and that gets us back to C up at the beginning by way of the 5 chord, and then back to C minor. Okay, so... I don't know quite how to really describe this this little melodic thing that I'm going to do. Um, it, it's basically this. It's like... Uh, and, it, you know, I'm concentrating here on the uh, C7 chord. And the diminished scale goes like this, but also the altered scale has the same first one, two, three, four, five, same first five notes. And that's what I'm using. So it doesn't matter if I used a, like a diminished chord or a C with a flat nine, you know, or if I used a C altered like that, you know, where I've got the sharp nine and the flat 13. And we've got a couple other two, five, one, so we could do the same kind of thing. I'm gonna set it up like this. And then I'm starting on the root of B flat. And I'll, I'll do a little like diminished chord here. It, it's just a B flat with a, uh, a B flat seven with a, with a flat nine there. And that's what I'm using. But I skip over this note and I just go right to the third and then get it coming back. And it's just a nice little thing. Now, if you're gonna try to put it in the next spot, you don't quite have as much time, but you should just go for it. You go E flat and then right here. You know, it doesn't quite fit the E flat minor chord, but you could use it there. And you could use it here. Right there. So, uh, one thing that's difficult to do is have a, a pre-planned idea and then try to work it into your solo. <laughs> it almost always fails. tried yeah failed let me try again yeah it kind of worked its way in there I I pretty much forced it to work, but there it is. And so just, you know, on any dominant seventh chord, 
you could almost be thinking it's like, you know, if you're going to an F, uh, you know, you can use an F, F uh, harmonic minor, you know, as a scale. So you're starting with that. It's a tricky little melodic pattern, you know. You could go to a major chord or a minor chord. That's just a little melodic idea that I like to use. And the nice thing is, is it hardly matters what kind of, you know, voicing you use for a dominant seventh chord, whether it's altered, unaltered, diminished, whatever, that, that little phrase works pretty nicely. Hope you enjoy playing this song. And if uh, this video was helpful to you, just hit that little thumbs up for me. Thanks. Bye.